All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I just want to give an update on the uh, wood burning garage heater. Uh, I'm going to give some temperature readings and kind of go through some of the things that uh, I like and don't like about it, uh, how well it's working, all that kind of good stuff. So uh, we got a little bit of a snowstorm. I was trying to beat, uh, get out here and start a fire, but I guess I lost that battle. So um, we'll see how well we can start a fire with some wet pallet wood and some logs and some dry stuff here. So let's get started. We made it inside here where it's much nicer so the camera equipment was getting wet outside so I had to bring it in but uh, we're inside here um, obviously if you haven't seen the original videos there's two videos I've done on the garage heater one was the initial build of the video of the, uh, the heater and then one was an upgrade or update that I did on it a few months ago um, and I've, I've, I've used it a few times this winter but honestly this winter has been so mild here in Michigan that I haven't haven't had to run it a lot I put the electric heater on in here one day uh, that I came out here and uh, one or two other days I fired this up and ran it. Um, I have had a couple hiccups and problems that I ran into uh, that I'll kind of go through with you now and show you what I've done to kind of help minimize that when I use it. Uh, but it works really well. So right now I've got, uh, I've been running it for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so since I started the fire. We're up to about 112 degrees that we're getting out of the heater itself, which is really good. Um, the temperature inside the garage here is about 47 degrees it's already gone up about five degrees since i started so it was at about 42 43 it's at i guess at 48 now um and so it's been working really well and it does heat the garage now we have a fully insulated garage here except for the door which is something i plan to insulate down the road but uh it does really work work well to heat this space is it going to get up to 80 degrees in here probably not um you know but it does warm the area this is normally where i work if our garage wasn't such a disaster i would probably would have spent more time out here this, this winter but i just haven't had time to get out here and do much so but uh, uh i'll bring you in close here and kind of show you one of the issues that i've had with the the system since i upgraded it and i actually I guess you could say i made it too efficient because it's it's uh the big problem has been it's overheating so i'll show you what i did to uh help minimize that Okay, so right now you're looking in the little sump bucket or whatever you want to call it where I have that little submersible pump. Um, I'll put a link to the, the pump that I'm using in the description. I actually forget uh, the specifics on it, but I tell you what, it's been a good pump. Uh, it's for some, some reason, somehow it has taken the heat very well and not, uh, you know, as much as I've run it here, it hasn't uh, stopped working. So that's a good thing. But that, what ends up happening is since I insulated all the underground lines, the water circulating gets so hot, uh, once it gets up to about 165 degrees, which is getting close to the limits of, you know, what the PVC and stuff like that I have here is rated for, uh, it starts to, the, well, the pump goes into thermal overload, overload and it shuts off basically. And so I've had to uh, take some, some steps to mitigate against that, I guess. But so the water, you know, just circulates back in here and you can see it steaming. It's starting to get real hot. Uh, we're up to 116, 117 right now. But normally I had the water level filled all the way up to here. So the pump was completely submerged in that real hot water and it didn't have any, uh, it didn't have any way to, to kind of cool off. So what I did here was I just lowered the level of the water so that the top half of the pump sticks out. And that helps to, to cool the, 
uh, the pump a little bit and uh, helps it from getting that th thermal trip. Uh, one of the things that I, there's lots of different things and I've actually had a lot of really good ideas from people on how to, you know, make this run better. And I just haven't had time to get out here and, and update or change anything, but I'll kind of talk a little bit about some of the things I plan to do. Probably, it's not gonna be a rush. I'll probably do it this summer, maybe in the fall uh, for next season, but um, I'm gonna make this thing really, really efficient. Uh, I also, just to tell you too, the, temp the temperature outside is about 26 degrees, 24, 25, 26, just depending on where you get your temperature readings at. And again, you know, this is keeping the, the garage, it's probably gonna be up to about 60 degrees here within the hour. So I think that's pretty sufficient. A lot of people have asked, you know, how, how hot can you keep the garage and stuff like that. So uh, as long as I can keep this running without it tripping off and thermal overload happening and the pump shutting off, uh, you know, this thing will run and keep the garage warm comfortably for me. All right, so it's just been running for uh, a few more minutes here and we're already up to about 121, 122 degrees coming in with the water, water coming in from the, the stove, the, the heater. And it's about 49, somewhere around 49, 50 degrees. It was up over 50 a few minutes ago, but so it's heating up pretty quickly. Um, again, it's probably been a total of a half an hour since I started a fire and it's already gone up 10 degrees almost. So um, we'll see if we can get it up to 60 in here. So this is the, the radiator setup that I have and I'll try to, I don't want to tear, take the fan out from behind it right now just because it's starting to get, get hot and I want to make sure I keep this thing cool um, before it gets, gets too hot. Um, but the fan behind it's just one of those cheap little window fans that actually was, we found it in a, a trailer, a travel trailer we bought last year or two years ago. But uh, that's been, I think, one of the biggest things I can improve on. You know, this, this blows out a pretty decent amount of air. I can feel air, you know, a few feet away from the fan, but, or from the radiator here. But I think what I need to do is get a really big, one of those cyclone fans or whatever, just one big fan to put behind here and really kick air out of this thing. I think that would help cool the system down and get a lot more heat into the garage. Uh, right now I'm just circulating wasted heat back to the heater to heat up again when I really could, could get a lot more out of here. Another thing that I could do, a lot of people have suggested, is get a second radiator and another fan and put it in maybe you know, underneath another workbench or somewhere else uh, or right next to this one and get a second fan for that, which would help to get more of the heat in here. Um, you know, with it being insulated underground right now, I, I can't even really start a full blown fire. Uh, if I really get that fire cooking out there, it'll overheat this thing no matter what I do. So the sweet spot is just to keep a nice slow, uh, kind of smaller fire burning in there with some bigger logs. And if I can keep the temperature at right around 120, 140 degrees, then this thing will run sweet. So, but uh, definitely works well. Well, I'm just about finished up in here. Uh, I've got, uh, was working on some other things, uh, aquaponics lights and things like that out here. So uh, I've been out here for about two hours, maybe a little bit longer, two hours, 15 minutes or so. Um, I did hit the thermal over overload on the pump and it did shut off for about half an hour. So I didn't really get an accurate temperature. I was trying to see how hot I could get the garage, but it got up to about 55 a little while ago. It's down to about 53 now. I'm letting the fire die out, but so I think with some minor improvements to this, a, bi a bigger fan in here, number one, would probably be the, the easiest solution. You could definitely put two radiators in the system, like I talked about earlier, that's a great solution. You could also, if you wanted to really get elaborate with this, you could put in a regular circulation pump with a pressure release, uh, pre pressure relief valve and tie the whole system in closed, you know, make it a closed loop uh, without the sump tank here and uh, then you could run a little bit hotter temperatures and probably the, you wouldn't hit a thermal overload on the pump that way. So, so there's lots of different ways you could do this, but the concept is definitely good. Uh, I really love having this thing. It works great. I've always got junk to burn and trees that fall down around here and cardboard boxes and those paper briquettes we make and all kinds of stuff. So there's never a shortage of things to burn. So uh, putting that stuff to use and, and being able to heat the garage when I'm in here, you know, when it's 26 degrees outside, having it over 50 in here is definitely comfortable. 
yeah, I wear a little bit of a long sleeve shirt out here or whatever, but it works just fine. So um, hopefully that gives you guys an idea of how well this thing works. And uh, if you guys have questions or suggestions, I, I love to hear anything. Uh, you guys a lot of times come up with ideas and things that I don't think of. So uh, I'd love to hear about that. I know some other people have done some things like this and shared with me. And uh, you know, if you guys build something like this, share it with us too on Facebook. We, we always appreciate that. So um, as always guys, comments and questions below thumbs up makes a huge difference and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and uh, look for that aquaponics light video coming out soon as well and as always guys thanks for watching have a good one